Good morning, and welcome to the Lone Star Weekly Business Hour. Your host, Rick Schisler, is a Silver Fox advisor who personally has over 40 years of experience as a serial entrepreneur. So sit back, pull out your pad and pencil, and get ready to take notes as we join Rick Schisler in his Lone Star Weekly Business Hour. Welcome, and thank you for joining us for this edition of the Weekly Business Hour. This is Rick Schisler, your Silver Fox advisor and host of the Weekly Business Hour. Well, let's get started with today's show. We'll start first with our thought for the week, entitled Living in the Present. Then a quick check-in with Dick on the business of Lone Star. And our special guest today is the jewelry judge, Mr. Ben Gordon. I will also have an update on some local business news and offer you some ideas I hope you can use. So sit back. Get ready, pull out your pad and pen, and let's get started. First thing I want you to make a note on that pad is my email address. If you have a question or a thought, anything about the show, during the show, or even after the show, please email it to me at rick, R-I-C-K, at IRLoneStar.com. Okay, our thought for the week, living in the present. Let me start with a quote. Uh, It's one of my favorite quotes. Possibly have used it before because I really believe it's true, and it is, few of us ever live in the present. We are forever anticipating what is to come or remembering what has gone. That's a quote from one of my favorite authors, Louis L'Amour, uh, who I loved his great books. Uh, they may not have been the highest literary gems, but they had great stories, and they were a lot of fun to read, and some of my kids enjoyed them as well. Few of us ever live in the present. We are forever anticipating what is to come or remembering what has gone. You know, we're always encouraged, uh, even in the Bible, to live in the present. And I think that's very important when it comes to our business. We have to work on what is in front of us today, and tomorrow will take care of itself. Now, that's that's asking a lot for most of us. Uh, the idea that tomorrow will take care of itself, kind of a risky proposition. But I encourage you to think about that. I'm not saying you don't need to have a good business plan and know where you're going with your business tomorrow and the day after and the month and the year after that, but stay focused on what's in front of you today when you're working in your business. You know, the byline to this for me personally, and I think for a lot of people, is what's most important to me about that quote is let the past go. Learn from the past and then let it go. Uh, I've known too many people in my career, particularly in working with clients over the last five, ten years, people that continually beat themselves to death, or they do, well, but for this, I could have done that. Those kind of things really are a waste of time. Uh, Yes, you need to analyze when you make a mistake or you miss an opportunity, or even if you find the right opportunity and you seize it, you need to evaluate it, but then let it go. Keep that focus. Keep that energy on what's happening today. So you can respond to your clients and your customers, and you're always, always ready to do business. There are always new directions and opportunities in front of us, as we like to say on the show, but you've got to be awake and ready for them as they come your way. Well, you're in the right place if you're a business owner, manager, or you're considering starting your own business, because the weekly business hour is where Montgomery County comes to talk about the latest in business news, ideas to improve your business, and to hear from some of our own local business leaders on how they have found success right here in Montgomery County. I want you to remember, too, before we go any further, that we're on Facebook, and I'd appreciate it. If you enjoy the show, then like us on Facebook, the Weekly Business Hour page. That way you have an opportunity to receive notice each week as the show is posted to our podcast. Well, now let's check in right here at the business at Lone Star. Dick, what's on tap for Lone Star this coming week? I want to let your listeners know if they're interested in more talk radio on Lone Star Community Radio. We added another show last week. Uh, Real Talk with Joey Sheaf is on Thursdays at noon, and he's talking everything from faith, politics, and overall anything, really. Uh, So stay tuned for that on Thursdays at noon with Real Talk. And he always loves people talking to him during the show on Facebook. Just look him up on Facebook, Real Talk with Joey Sheaf. That's on Thursdays at noon on IRLoneStar.com. Well, Dick, it sounds like you're filling out the complement of talk shows. Uh, you got any room for another show? Yes, we can squeeze you in. If you're interested in having your own talk show, just email me at D-I-C-K at IRLoneStar.com. That's D-I-C-K at IRLoneStar.com. 
Well, I would encourage anyone who's listening to the show or a podcast, if you have an idea that might help your business by you being on the radio and talking about something that you're good at, that you're an expert at, that shows the public what your business is all about, then contact Dick. Uh, See if you can put together a show and put it out there on IRLoneStar.com, Montgomery County's community radio. One last reminder before we get into what I consider the heart and soul of our show, and that's our guest in the studio, that's another reminder. Please email me at rick at IRLoneStar.com with your comments, your thoughts, or even your business questions, and I'll do my best to respond to you quickly and help you out on those things. Well, my favorite part of the show, right? Anyone that listens to the show on a regular basis knows that it's the in-studio special guests that always are quick to get my heart pumping real well, because I think that the idea that these folks bring to us a lot of experience, uh, hopefully a lot of good judgment, a lot of ideas and thoughts, because they're in the trenches. They've started a business, maybe many businesses. And today we have a lot of experience with us, and I think this is going to be exciting. The jury judge, Mr. Ben Gordon, is with us to talk about his career spanning some, Ben, how many, 60-some years now? Over 64 years. 64 years of experience, ladies and gentlemen, sitting in the studio today, and we're going to take some time and explore it. And I know uh, Ben has had a wonderful career, and hopefully he'll share with you some of the experiences and provide you with some guidance as you start or build your business. Well, Ben, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Well, I'm excited about you being here, obviously. Uh, My pulse has already jumped up to 90 now. Uh, Let's start off with a question uh, about your business and what you do. I mean, you've had this 64-year career. uh, And as we were talking about uh, prior to the show, started in New York City back uh, way back when, uh, as you shared some great stories with me. Share with us a little bit about your business experience and about building your business. Thank you for having me. I started on the streets of New York. I was a runner in the Diamond District, and my first job was with a jewelry manufacturer. I needed a job because the Korean War was just finished. Dwight Eisenhower became president, and he said, we don't want you. Go get a job. So I found a job in the jewelry industry, and I stayed with the company for 13 years in the manufacturing end. In 1966, 50 years ago today, Gordon Jewelry invited me to come help them set up in the manufacturing of their jewelry for their stores. So right now I'm celebrating my 50th anniversary coming to Houston. I think I'm more of a Houstonian now than a New Yorker, but not by my accent. <laughs> I still, people laugh, you still have an accent? Yeah, I'm at Southern New York. Brooklyn. <laughs> so, uh, being with Gordon Jewelry for th- uh, 11 years at their home office, we set up their manufacturing. And then in 1977, I left Gordon's to open up the, my independent jewelry appraisers because we saw there was a need. People kept coming over. You're in the jewelry business. Where can I get an appraisal? I don't know where to go. So, we heard that long enough. So, I said, well, let's start helping the people, and we started working out of our home. Within two years, I was making more money than I did at Gordon's, so we opened up a small office, and the rest is history. How we've been keeping up with everything is education, education, education. Never stop learning. I just came back from California, and we had four days of intensive training, how to detect lab-grown diamonds, enhanced colored stones, along with what makes a ruby a ruby. All these things are now becoming part of our everyday we have to look at. We have to protect our clients because when they buy jewelry, when they go on a cruise, or they buy jewelry over the Internet, a diamond, they want to come to me and say, did I get a good buy? I don't know. Let me look at the diamond. I can't judge a diamond from a grading report that they buy over the Internet. You were going to ask me, what has changed? In short, the Internet has revolutionized our industry because the millennials or younger people are willing to send twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 to strangers over the Internet to get a diamond that comes in with a paper or we call this grading report, 
and then they bring it up to me. Is the grading report to what we bought? Is the value there? Did I get ripped off? The same thing on cruises. They go there. There's no protection. There's no BBB. There's nothing to help them when they come back and find out that they bought something that wasn't what they were told. So learning all this, this is how we've evolved. I edu- I send my client, not my clients, but my people, my employees, every year to get more education. The greater their education is, the better I can do a job for my clients. They rely on us. You're the expert. You tell me if it's a lab-grown diamond or is an earth diamond. These are all part of our day-to-day activities. People want to buy. People want to sell. People want to distribute the jewelry among the heirs. They have to know what is it worth. And that's where we come in. We're an independent jewelry appraiser and consultant. Means we have no affiliation with any jewelry store, any manufacturer. We built our business on that basis. Why? Because we don't want to be influenced by the jewelry store to give, tell me what I should price the item or overgrade it. And that's what happens, unfortunately, in our industry. Well, let me ask you this. Going back to, I think you said you started your business in 1977? As an independent appraiser. Right. But I was working all these years in the jewelry industry. Right. But in 77, you went in business for yourself. That is correct. Because you saw a need or you perceived a need back in 77. I mean, did you foresee the Internet? Because obviously that's had to create a lot of new business for you. No, at those days, it was only the yellow pages or word of mouth that was where people came to me. And when the Internet came in, that changed the whole equation within our industry because people didn't want to go to a jewelry store. They don't want to be harassed. They go to their smartphone. They go to the, not only the Internet, but they go to the website. They look at pieces of paper. They buy a diamond based on a paper without seeing, touching, feeling that diamond. Does it talk to you? Does it say, love me? They have no comparison. All they look at is a piece of paper on the Internet, and they buy a diamond, and they spend all this money. Then they go to a local retail jeweler to buy the mounting, by the time they pay for the mounting and the setting and the other labor, they would have been better off buying the diamond locally. Well, that's a, that's a classic consumer story. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're up against a break right now. We're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to talk with Mr. Gordon, the jury judge, a little bit more about being in business for himself all these years and some of the things he's learned just being in business. So please stay with us. Taylor Eyes PR works exclusively to get your business noticed. Public relations is how others perceive you and your company. By tailorizing the marketing strategy exclusively to your business, your story is told. Taylor Eyes PR services include networking, social media, blogs, press releases, public appearances, and event planning. To learn about Taylor Eyes PR, call Margie Taylor at 936-828-6881 or visit the website at taylorizedpr.com. My business is tailored to yours. You are listening to the Weekly Business Hour, and this is Rick Schisler, your Silver Fox advisor and host for the show. Uh, when we went to break, we were having a great conversation with the jewelry judge, Mr. Ben Gordon. Uh, ben, you know, if I was starting a business today, again, we talked 64 years of experience. Uh, you've been in your own business, what, for 35, 40 years uh, on your own. What advice would you give me if I came to you and said, gosh, you've got all this wonderful history, you've been successful? Uh, and I want to start a business, just give me some general advice what I need to do. Number one, stay out of debt. Make sure you have a game plan. And because most people, when they go to get a loan, they ask, what is your plan, business plan? And they, they don't know. They know they have passion. They know that they want to be on their own. They want to be their own boss. But they don't realize that it's a 24-7 job. And unless you have support from either a wife or a significant other, you are going to be in trouble because you're going to be thinking heart and soul about the business 24-7 as you grow. The other thing I would say, build a network. Talk to other people in your industry. 
See if there's a niche for you, or is the competition so great that you're just beating against the wall, that you're not going to make it. No use not networking. And make sure you join the Better Business Bureau to get a a quality reputation. If you need help, go to the people like I did, to the Silver Foxes. They were very helpful when I wanted to expand my business. And they're very understanding, and they've been through the process. So that would be another thing I would recommend. Build, uh, build, and like I said, build a network, build a, uh, get a, a mentor to help you. Well, and I'm going to talk about that a little uh, later because I'm absolutely the mentor part. Uh, we'll talk about that, but that's one of the keys as well. And I think your advice about debt is well placed. Too many people I bump into uh, that have started businesses and they, like you say, have a passion. They've got an idea. They're excited but they don't look at the realities is what I call them. And, and the idea of having some kind of written plan in my case, if it's one page, I'm the old one page business plan guy. Okay. Some people frown on that. That's okay. Uh, some of my colleagues at silver Fox would frown on that, but I, I'm just trying to get people to write it down and think about it. Well, let's talk about it. You, you mentioned the, the better business bureau. Uh, one of the things I think, which is an outstanding accomplishment in, in business today, particularly in the greater Houston area is to be recognized Uh, by the Better Business Bureau, the uh, annual awards they hand out, the Pinnacle Award being the highest award. And you and your company won that award this past year. And I hope uh, that you will take a few minutes and just talk to us about what it takes to win that award. Well, they give you 10 easy questions, they say. It took me six months to do those 10 simple questions. We look to what made us successful. We analyze ourselves. We take ourselves apart. We work out how do other people perceive us. Why did we become successful? And then we write it down. We answer each question as it comes. We we plan for the future. What did we do right? What can we do better? How can we meet our client's needs? The client is everything. Without a client, we're nobody. And we go out nowadays. We talk to people. We do consumer advocates. We talk to different groups. We ed- try to educate them. And in doing the Pentacle Award, this is all part of our business. We have to give back to the community if the community is supporting us. Well, and I think you bring up a good point. I mean, and I really appreciate what the Better Business Bureau does on a day-to-day basis, but I think these awards is really special to recognize businesses in our community that really are exceptional. And your business got uh, recognition as an exceptional business uh, this past year. So I applaud and and give you uh, due recognition for that. And I think your point about the introspective nature of how you looked at your business. One of the things I feel that people miss the boat in when they when they try to win one of these awards where you have to submit information is use it as a business building tool, which is what it sounds like you did. You took six months and used it to analyze your business, that your your organization, the folks that work with you, you took time to analyze who you were. I suspect on the other end, when you were done, you came out a better business. That's correct. And it gave us a, a path, a guideline, what we're going to do, how we're going to continue being successful. Because t- technology, the economy, everything changes on a yearly basis. Things are changing so quickly today. If you're not keeping up with the technology in our industry, how do you detect a lab-grown diamond? How do you detect an enhanced diamond? These are legitimate, but if they don't tell you what you're buying, you can't be on top of your game. People come to me because they rely on me. They're spending a lot of money. They want the best they can get. Do I help them? If I'm not helping them, then I shouldn't be in business. Well, you know, that brings me to what I consider kind of a catch-all or summary type question. What does the future hold for you and your business? Well, to be an antique, you've got to be 100 years old. I'm only a work in process. I'm only a vintage right now. But I, being in the business makes me young, makes me feel good. I can't wait for Mondays to come where I can get back into action. I, get, I work six days a week, and I don't even feel it. And I have a good wife that works with me and never complains. She would like to take a little more time off, but, hey, we, the clients come. We have to be there for them. 
But it, what it takes is dedication. The clients depend on our knowledge and needs and their needs, whether they're selling or buying or trading. Well, and it sounds like to me to kind of wind it up in a minute or so we have left. You have a need, and you mentioned that in the very beginning of our conversation today, a need that seems to be increasing because of technology, of, of artificial diamonds, as I call them. I mean, you're, there's a tremendous need for what you offer, and it's growing. And uh, so you're always going to be busy. Is that, is that a fair statement? That's correct, and I try to help my, cl- uh, my people, my employees. I send them to the convention seminars, keep up to date with me. The more you know, the better we can provide our service to the community and to the, our clients. Well, let me ask you, just for the sake of those who are listening or may listen to the podcast later, if someone wants to get in touch with you and your business, what's the best way for them to do it? JewelryJudgeBenGordon.com, and you'll get into my website. Having a website has been tremendous. Having reviews, we have been able to attain over 200 five-star reviews because the clients appreciate what we do. Get a website. Make sure you get reviews. There's no more ask your family. The family doesn't know. It's the people that have been to you that know. And our phone number is 713-961-1432. Either myself, my wife, or one of my, uh, some of my employees. We have the smile that you can hear on the phone. Well, that I love that. that wins. I love that, Ben. Well, Ben... Gordon, the jury judge, I deeply appreciate you traveling here to Conroe today to join us. And ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you picked up that entire interview. And if you didn't, remember, there's a podcast will be posted later in the week and you can listen to the entire interview. Mr. Gordon, thank you again for joining us. Thank you for having me. And ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a short break and we come back and we'll discuss some local business news and an idea or two I hope you can use in your business today. Are you planning on growing, expanding, or possibly selling your business? All of these business opportunities require developing strategy and setting goals in order to achieve success. Providing specialized consulting in these and other key business decisions is what Silver Fox Advisors have been doing since 1986. Let us help you today. Call us at 713-343-3718. It might be the most profitable call that you ever make. This is Rick Schisler, your Silver Fox advisor and host of the Weekly Business Hour. Uh, you've just been listening to an interview with the jewelry judge, Mr. Ben Gordon. Uh, quite an enlightening interview, a man with 60-plus years' experience in business. I uh, had a lot to say, and I hope, again, if you didn't hear the entire interview, that you will look for the podcast when it's uh, posted later in this week. Well, let's move on to weekly news and ideas you can use. Uh, as I was looking back over this past week, I came across a couple articles uh business articles uh, related to business as well as personal, I guess you could say, things happening here in Montgomery County that potentially could impact your business. The first uh, I'd like to mention, if you didn't catch it, was uh, one of the local power suppliers, Energy, is considering uh, installing, uh, constructing major power transmission lines uh, in the north part of the county, which will have an impact potentially on the residents and businesses in the north part of the county, Willis uh, area, Uh, in fact, north uh, towards Huntsville. And why is that, or what is the impact? Well, uh, obviously, the construction and the route of these power lines uh, creates a lot of conversation, justly so, because it will obviously have an impact wherever they go uh, to the geography uh, that they cross and so on and so forth. But what I wanted to convey to you, and the reason I bring up this uh, idea is because uh, this project known as the Western Region Economic Project uh, will provide an increased amount of electricity supply, make it available, if you will, to those in the community, particularly in the north part of the county. And a lot of times our infrastructure uh, in the area of water, uh, electricity, and whatnot doesn't get the attention that it needs, uh, particularly as it relates to future growth. Uh, We talk a lot about roads and bridges, and that's great because they're obvious, they're in front of us. Uh, We talk a lot about in Montgomery County and really the surrounding counties, in fact, the entire state of Texas and other parts of the United States about water. But a lot of times electricity, in my opinion, uh, does not get enough discussion. It's not uh, thought about 
or considered enough in business. Because if you're going to open a business, if you're going to establish yourself in a particular area, uh, it is critical and important that you have the right amount of power available to you, electrical power today and in the future. Now, it's, it could be the fact that you're just opening what I like to call a Main Street business, uh, just a storefront or maybe a manufacturing facility uh, that requires a great deal of electricity. But electricity is our primary power source uh, in this country, and we need to make sure that when we open our business, if we intend to be there for the long term, that enough power is available. And I know as over the years as I built businesses in the greater Houston area uh, and outside of Houston, I ran into power issues in my businesses uh, from time to time, particularly in the manufacturing side where we couldn't get good, clean power because the infrastructure just wasn't available. So I want to mention that the the Western Region Economic Project, that's the name that Energy's given uh, to this project, uh, is something that bears uh, watching if you intend or have any idea about opening a business in the north part of the county. And, of course, I know that the route of the power transmission lines will continue to have some concern to the people that live in the north part of the county uh, and be aware that that project is moving forward because these projects uh, are things that uh, take years to come together. So when you're looking for that location for your business, be sure you check out the power, not that they just have the 240, 440, 110 that you need, but what's in the works for the infrastructure to be upgraded and maintained so your business can always turn on the lights. Uh, the second business item, uh, if you haven't heard already, uh, the Montgomery County has adopted, the county has adopted its budget for 2016 and 17. And this is something that I always talk about uh, to business clients. I've talked about it on the air is be aware of what government is doing that can impact you. And obviously the annual budget, uh, I don't think you have to be a guru or a nerd about the budget and dig down in. Some people do. They enjoy that. They provide a lot of great feedback. But when you own a business, be aware of where your county, your local governments are on their budgets, how they're doing, uh, how are tax revenues doing? I mean, are they up? Are they down? Uh, it's important because this gives you a direct indication of what's going on in the business at large around you. I mean, obviously, we know our own revenue if it's dependent on the local area. We know where it's at. But I think you've got to have a little information. I encourage you to have information about the area as a whole and what's going on, not just in competitive businesses, but also looking at the government and see how they're doing not only in tax collection, but obviously how they spend that money, what is happening on the expense side. Um, county budget was set at $347 million. Uh, there are increases in the budget, but apparently the tax rate, they figured out a way to cut the tax rate, uh, which to me is always about getting votes. Uh, but the fact is that more money is coming in because the area is growing. But one of the things that our, our county judge pointed out, County Judge Doyle, and I think this is important to remember, is Montgomery County is still very much a rural county. Uh, he stated that 80 percent of the county is unincorporated, which if you're a rural, you're not going to have the tax collection. You're not going to have the ability to collect at a rate, say, that Harris County has or even some of the cities like Conroe or Houston. So the fact is that our tax base is still dependent a great deal on rural. And for the long term, that will impact how much money will be available, regardless of where the rate is set. In general, how much money is available to for the county to collect. And they are going to spend some of this new money as they collect or raise the budget on infrastructure, just what we just talked about, roads and bridges, um, and the ability to transport your goods and for your customers to move about in the county. So that's an important issue, I believe, to each of you to stay on top of it. Uh, next item I'd like to talk about is something from time to time that I digress, if you will, a little bit. And I talk about uh, something that I feel is very important. This is an idea, fits in the idea area. And Mr. Gordon touched on this, the importance of having a mentor. This is meant as an encouragement. Uh, I only do this every few months, but since I am a Silver Fox advisor, since I'm in, my primary business is to mentor people, business people. I think it's important to remind you that if you're listening to this podcast or listening to the program live today, that you remember how important a mentor can be in the success of your business. Uh, first thing I do is encourage you, if you don't have a mentor, look into it. Spend a few minutes. 
uh, talk to other people that are in business uh, that own a business similar to yours, not necessarily in the industry, uh, but that's a good resource is your industry. Talk to people who are successful. And many times you're going to find more times than not, the successful small business owners have a mentor of some sort. They have a business advisor. You can put different labels on it. Uh, some people have business coaches. Uh, all of these things generally are the same thing. I believe just a little different approach. But one of the things is, is the Silver Fox Advisor, uh, you know, we dedicate our lives. We're men and women, 50-plus people in the greater Houston area, uh, celebrating our 30 years uh, of being in existence as an association, a group. Uh, we all work independently. Uh, we use our past experiences. We've all finished our main career track, but we want to stay involved. We want to stay busy and, and take that experience that we had. Uh, many of us working in small businesses, others working in very large businesses. But as a common thread, we all had profit and loss experience. Uh, we started up units. We built them. We sold them. We've all got that common experience to share with people who are our clients. And I would encourage you, if you don't have a mentor, a mentor, you need to look into it. Because the bottom line is every business leader, owner, needs someone from time to time to talk to who has the experience and in the willingness to give them the unvarnished truth about their business. We all need somebody to communicate with outside our very closed realm, our family, whatnot, because we have business challenges that come up every week. So it's very important. And if you'd like to learn more about the Silver Fox Advisors, I encourage you to visit their webpage at www.silverfoxadvisors.org. Uh, find out more about mentoring. And if you have questions for me, again, email me here at the show, rick at irlongstar.com. I'd like to close out this segment a little bit and share with you a, a quote I picked up the other day. It's been around for a while, but it sort of hit home, and hopefully it'll hit home for you and your business. If you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always gotten. If you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always gotten. Uh, Tony Robbins, who, who's a great motivational speaker, uh, that quote is attributed to him. Uh, if you know Tony and his work, he does a lot of motivational. Every once in a while, I think it's good to hear that kind of thing. But I think that quote in particular, if you keep doing the same thing, you're going to have the same results, everything else staying the same. And the fact is, if you want to change your business, you want to change your life, you want to improve or grow your business and you haven't been doing so, then you've got to change some things. You've got to try. You've got to take a risk. You've got to step out a little bit. But before you do all that, first, make up your mind to do it. Secondly, put it down on paper. Mr. Gordon talked about this during the interview. All good, smart, successful business leaders will tell you they always have a plan. So I encourage you, Think about taking that risk. Think about making changes. And it may be only tweaks, small changes in your business to make it better than it is today. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that brings me to the end of that segment. We're going to take a short break. And when we come back, uh, I'm going to share with you the Silver Fox tip of the week. Uh, I posted uh, a little bit about it on LinkedIn if you're connected with me. If not, please do so uh, to kind of give you an idea of some things I think are important about opportunities and how to properly approach them. We'll be right back with you. Please stay with us. Running a business is hard. The pressure to maximize profits and minimize loss continue to grow. Schooley Mitchell of Houston can help. Their independent consultants will ensure you are receiving the best communications and credit card processing services at the best prices. Most importantly, their services are completely risk-free. If they don't find savings for you, there is no fee. Contact Schooley Mitchell of Houston today to find out. Call 832-314-1815 or visit their website at schooleymitchell.com forward slash jmpolio. Are you paying too much for your personal or business insurance? Patricia Cooper Insurance on FM 1488 and Tamina Road is an independent agency that can shop multiple carriers to find the best rates and coverages to fit your specific needs. Call us today at 281-356-9955 and let us go to work for you. Patricia Cooper Insurance, where our customers are treated like family. listening to the Weekly Business Hour, and this is Rick Schisler. 
your Silver Fox advisor and host for the show. I hope you've enjoyed the show to this point. We had a great guest in the jewelry judge, Mr. Ben Gordon, and some of the thoughts and business ideas that are going on around in our county. But we're to that point in the show that I like to take an opportunity to kind of do a deep dive on a subject uh, and try to explain to you some aspects, uh, perhaps provide, I hope, some encouragement to you uh, in, a, in a positive way uh, that you can improve or grow your business. And today I'd like to talk about opportunities, particularly what I call personally impact opportunities. Impact opportunities being the opportunities that come to each and every one of us, whether you recognize them or not, the opportunity to really change your business. And they come to all of us. I believe that. But many, many times we don't see them for what they are. Uh, We ignore them or we do see them. We give them a short uh, look and then we walk away. And then there are other times when we look at them, we think about it, and we go for it, and then it doesn't turn out so well, or maybe it does turn out well. So impact opportunities, are they really an opportunity or a threat? Well, let me start off by saying I think they are what you make them. In other words, if you take the time as a business owner to analyze those opportunities, and first, I I need to stop and back up for a second, you need to recognize them when they come your way. Because again, third, fourth time, don't mean to be repetitive, but opportunities are there for you and your business. You just have to look in the right places because they're there for every business that is properly set up, properly managed, properly run. Uh, opportunities are there. But back on track, opportunity or threat. Again, it's dependent on you and what you do when you see an opportunity. And you start out where you've got to first analyze that opportunity. You know, a good friend of mine and Silver Fox advisor uh, cohort, uh, Dick Hendy, wrote in the recent uh, Silver Fox advisor newsletter, which I posted a link in the article that I posted on LinkedIn and other places in social media. If you're on my list, you saw it, where he talked about this subject, and he's the one that stimulated me to think a little bit deeper about it and also to go back on some study and information that I had uh, where I developed the idea of impact opportunities. Dick talked about opportunity and how you should approach these opportunities. Uh, And he provided a list, and I'm going to share several things off Dick's list. This is not original to me, but I think it's important that you have some kind of process that as a business that you have these processes available to you. In my case, I keep them written down uh, today on a computer. They used to be in a folder, uh, handwritten or typewritten, but the idea is I can access them when something happens because these are not happening every day. So others say, well, I'm smart enough or my brain's got capacity. I just remember them. And that's okay, particularly if you're getting enough of these. And there are businesses, are individuals that have opportunities coming at them every single day. So they're analyzing them. They're going through the process every day, and they can keep track of it. But one of the things that Dick points out, and to me it's obvious but it's missed so many times, is take time to analyze the opportunity. Analyze it from all angles. Think through it. And I don't think you have to spend a lot of time. That's the major complaint I get. Well, I just don't have the time. Well, if you're dealing with what I call an impact opportunity, where it has the opportunity, if it's the right one, it has the ability to really change your business for the the positive, to make your business better, stronger, grow faster, more profitable, whatever, or all of the above, then you need to set aside some time and analyze the opportunity from all angles. The second thing is you need to seek some advice, both in-house and out-house. If you have a group of employees, if you have a team, obviously you turn to them. If you have just a key employee that you can communicate with about the business in general, about the future, turn to him or her. But again, and I just mentioned this, and I don't mean to drill it too far, but turn to your mentor, turn to your banker, turn to your accountant, turn to your legal advisor, turn to these people and get their advice. Run some what-if scenarios. Dick points this out, and I think this is a wonderful one. What if we do this? What impact is it going to have on our business? What potential impact? Score the, the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Now, that's original to me, if you, or I should say the team that put the Clint Eastwood movies together, because every change is going to have a good side to it. It's going to have good. It's going to have some potential downside bad, and Thirdly, perhaps, there'll be something about it that's just kind of ugly. There's going to be some pain. 
uh, no pain, no gain. I don't know. But analyze the good and the bad. Set up a T account. I know a number of people who do that on a piece of paper, on the back of an envelope, as my grandfather used to do, and say, well, here are the pluses and minuses. Whatever your method or process is, but take time to do them. One of the things that Dick points out, and I think this is great, and I'll just mention this in passing, is analyze whether the opportunity is just too good to be true. In other words, are, are, are you looking through rose-colored glasses? Or is someone bringing this opportunity to you? You're not really sure who they are. You know, many times our opportunities that come to us are brought to us by other people. And so we have to go through that whole analysis, which may take you a matter of seconds. It takes me a little longer, at least a few minutes, to say, okay, what is the trustworthiness of this individual, this organization that's brought me this, this uh, opportunity? What's their track record? So I've got to analyze that really before I do anything. One of the important things, and I think only a banker like Dick would remember this, uh, but we all need to remember this. When we take on an, a challenge of a new opportunity and we take on the idea of growing our business, making it more profitable, more successful, we have to analyze the return on investment. In other words, if I take this opportunity on, I add these employees, I buy this piece of equipment, then what time frame am I looking at on paper first to earn my money back? And so many times this gets the short shift. I, I see it most often used when buying equipment or, or leasing a new building or building your own building with real estate equipment, but we don't really look at it with human capital, with individuals, that we're going to have to hire new people in order to execute on this opportunity. You need to step back, and a lot of times this means you need to step out, as I mentioned earlier, and contact your accountant, who should be an advisor, as well as someone that prepares a tax return. Your legal advisor, the same there, too. Someone that can give you some general advice, not just about a particular situation. And I think the, the end of the, uh, of the trail on this uh, for Dick and for myself is you need to build that plan. And again, I'm a one-page planner at the very least, but you need to sit down and put on paper, okay, here's the plan. I'm going to take this opportunity. I'm going to write the check. I'm going to expend the energy. I'm going to hire the people. I'm going to buy the equipment. But what is my plan? What am I going to do that's different? And so I have the ability to refer to my roadmap and my business plan as it's been modified or altered to know that I am executing on the opportunity. And last but not least, make that decision. Many times small business people just have trouble. They're challenged by pulling the trigger, if you will, and making that decision to go ahead and seize that opportunity. The idea that you have to make the go or no-go decision is difficult, and I think that's where it really is critical, again, not to be repetitive or preachy, that you have a good advisor, consultant, a mentor, you have people with financial ability, your banker even, where you can have the conversations and seek their advice. All of this doesn't take a lot of time, but when these impact opportunities come your way, you need to ferret out whether they're truly an opportunity or are they a threat that if you follow through on them, they threaten your business, potentially to the point of putting you out of business. So it's good to have a process. I encourage you to do that. I encourage you to check out my article, or if you need a link to Dick's article, please contact me, rick at irlonestar.com. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate you joining us today. I encourage you to stay up with everything that's happening here in Montgomery County and our community by staying in touch with the website at irlonestar.com variety of information there about everything going on in the county, business, individual, nonprofits, schools, governments, everything is right there at IRLoneStar.com. And as we close today, I want to give a big Lone Star thanks to our sponsors, our show sponsors, Patricia Cooper Insurance Company, Schooley Mitchell, and Taylorized PR, and especially all of my friends at the Silver Fox Advisors. Please put a note on your calendar to join us again next Monday right here on IRLoneStar.com at 11 a.m. Remember, you too can sponsor the Weekly Business Hour. Just contact me with, by email, rick at IRLoneStar.com for details. Look for the podcast of today's show on the Weekly Hour Business Hour page or at IRLoneStar.com and our Facebook page later this week. 
Until the next week, stay engaged and keep a focus on what's important in your business. Thanks for checking out this production on Old Star Community Radio, Montgomery County's radio station. For more information on this show and other shows on Lone Star, check us out online at IRLoneStar.com. If you're interested in sponsoring a program on Lone Star Community Radio and reaching the local audience of Montgomery County on FM, Internet, and TV media, please call 936-647-5747 or contact us online at IRLoneStar.com. This recording is a Lone Star Community Radio production. Produced by the show host and Dick Schistler of Lone Star Community Radio. Interested in volunteering as a music DJ or starting your own talk show? Yeah, contact Dick Schistler at dick at irlonestar.com or by phone at 936-647-5747.